Now, until last year, it was pretty hard not to make, of course, positive returns from the Australian equity market. We all know this, but of course, into 2009, very much a different story. Fund managers trying now to find some different ways to make cash, the traditional investment methods being reassessed. Peter Rice recently setting up his own fund as part of titanium asset management. So far, very healthily beating the odds. Just how, though? Well, he's in studio to explain. Peter, welcome to the program. Hey, Carson. Give me a sense of research that's brought you to where you are that would say, in a sense, go against all conventional wisdom, buck the trend and still get great returns. Yeah, well, the basic principle goes back uh, to, to my days running research for bearings in Asia. Um, one of the basic principles that we always worked off and, and what our whole industry has worked off since the 1930s, in effect, has been that uh, corporate value equals stock value. In other words, the valuation of a company doesn't matter whether it's a listed company or unlisted. Now, that was obviously developed in the aftermath of the biggest sort of unexplainable crash that anyone could come up with at that time. And it, if you go back to the 30s, you know, the markets were effectively unregulated. There were no water company, uh, no requirement for listed companies to uh, to have their accounts audited and, and um, mm -hmm. the whole system was largely unregulated. And obviously that's changed dramatically over the last 60, 70 years. Um, what we've got now is a situation where if markets, uh, you know, the basic principle behind that was that markets were unreliable and therefore untrustworthy and mm -hmm. you had to look outside that for an estimate of value. If markets haven't changed from that, we're all being paid a hell of a lot to, uh, to not be able to do much because if markets are irrational, um, how can we possibly be trying to predict them? And that's what funds managers are paid to do. We are paid to predict market pricing behaviour. So what we have to do is get away from, and one of the things that I started to work on nearly 20 years ago, um, looking at, at cross-market valuations, was whether it's actually possible to value markets and therefore, and start to sort out the issue, I guess, between how much of the value or how much of share price performance is a result of the market and how much is a result specifically of the company. And what, we've, what I spent a lot of time working on and what I've done a lot of high level research on um, has actually shown that markets are, are much more valuable and predictable than, uh, than we'd really thought possible and conventional wisdom allows for. Regardless of company profits? Because, I mean, without the no, companies, isn't it? No, 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 of course. Um, so the, uh, there's the combination of company profits and dividends. Um, there's also interest rates, which are obviously a macro level. Uh, there is also risk premiums, which is the big variable that has been almost unexplainable using conventional approaches. It's, uh, it's, it's something that we've, we've known um, is there, but we haven't even been able to measure it at a market level, let alone be able to predict it. So uh, movements how, in it. How does this new system go about changing that? Right, well, what we're doing is basically looking at the valuation of markets in the first place and then looking to value stocks relative to that. So yeah. one of the critical variables is obviously consensus market earnings and dividend growth. Um, which is, it's possible to then look at stocks relative to that in terms of their relative appeal. Um, if you go back to sort of basic principles as well, we apply the same approach to estimating risk for individual stocks. So we first of all have to work out um, market equity risk premiums and then look at the determinants of why particular stocks are priced at a variation from that and explain that. So that's the major part of the process that we're using. So we're getting away from corporate valuations, simple corporate valuations, and valuing now the traded stock. And what we find is that markets are much more short term than corporate analysts estimates are about. And that's not terribly hard, a great leap of faith to expect. We know that market prices are more variable than corporate valuations. It's a matter of determining what it is that drives those ex expectation variations. And we've found there is much greater consistency there than most people have ever thought. So a 200%, correct me if I'm wrong, return 
within the first year of launching this? Well, no, that's that's a bit excessive. It's about a, it's about 130 percent in 15 months. All right. Take a couple of sectors, if you will. Take, say, the mining sector. Pull yep. out a couple of stocks for me and tell me how you would evaluate. No, well, uh, let's go back to the right. to the fund structure. But right. We we are not a long only fund. What we've actually done is do exactly the opposite. Is set up um, a fund structure where we have offsetting long and short portfolios. Effectively a market neutral structure. Now that's not new, it's been around since was there was say, a possibility of first uh, shorting the market. That's all weather definition for you. Exactly. Yeah. The, um, the problem with those funds had always been though the methodology for being able to pick stocks in the long and short portfolios and being able to get consistent enough outperformance of the long portfolio relative to the short portfolio. Because what? You focus too much on company profits and things? No, no, no. The, no? the simple fact is you, in, the requirement to get that structure to work is that you have to be able to consistently predict share prices and be reasonably active in it mm -hmm. uh, in how that's going to work. Um, to make sure that you're getting large enough differential in the performance between the long and short portfolios and the mm -hmm. consistency to be able to get that to work. So what you're doing, what we're doing by predicting, effectively predicting share price behaviour, mm -hmm. we're able to create portfolios that produce much more consistent differential in performance than anyone's really been able to do before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, those market neutral funds, the reason they went out of favour was because no one could make money out of them consistently enough. Mm -hmm. And all that we've done is apply exactly the same structure, applied it purely to ASX 200 stocks. So we're talking about liquid stocks that we can get in and out of at any time mm -hmm. um, and uh, be able to actively trade those. That can and change on a dime, though. We've, we've seen redemptions frozen with some sure. of these, with these, these companies. Yeah, but the, the structure that we're using here, by, by employing purely ASX 200 stocks and keeping portfolios mm -hmm. at, uh, at a man manageable spread of stocks, um, the the primary issue there is to minimise that risk. Briefly, finally, what would make it all change? Say the market swings back up. Yes. This model, how foolproof is it in that, in that environment? From what we've seen, I mean, we've run this during. We ran this initially in periods of when the market was going up, and it outperformed even str very strongly in the first stages before we set the short portfolios. Um, so, what we would have to see is a complete change in the way the markets are behaving and pricing over what's happened over the last 30 years. Now, you know, that's uh, what's interesting with the study that, that we've done is that we haven't only studied the Australian market, we've studied the US, the UK and the major Asian markets mm -hmm. and found that this same process and basic structure has worked consistently over that 30-year period mm -hmm. in all of those markets. So that gives you a fairly reasonable yeah. Uh, confidence that what you've got is something that is fundamental and uh, and is likely to continue to perform in that way. Um, what we've also done is worked very hard on timing indicators so that we've always got the stocks that are the most undervalued in the long portfolio and that are the market is recognising that value on, on the long side and the most overvalued that the market's starting to over uh, recognise that as well on the short. So 133% to boil it all down roughly in 15 months. Stella returns. Congratulations. Many thanks mm. for coming in. We'll have to leave it Thank in. you. All right. Peter Rice there from Titanium Asset Management. Going uh, into it in some detail for you there. Let's take a short break. As we go to the break, down 2.6% on the ASX 200. Back other side of the break with plenty more. Stay with us.